Hello and welcome. We appreciate you joining us here today. We will be getting started right at the top of the hour. So get that last second coffee refill or something to take some notes with and we will see you in just a few minutes. Hello and welcome. Today we'll be chatting about Give Smart features for your spring events arsenal. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll take a moment to meet today's speakers. My name is Madison Koutman and I will be hosting today's, ses today's session. Excuse me, we're off to a great start. Joining us today as our Give Smart expert and um, just extraordinaire and speaker, we have Kirsten Promosik, our product operations manager. Uh, thank you, Kirsten, for being here with us. Of course, happy to be here. Yeah, so some housekeeping tips as we get going. Please feel free to use the Q&A box for any questions you might have as we go and check your chat boxes for resources and links we'll share throughout today's session. Our colleague Kathy is helping us out on the back end, so keep the questions coming. Also, today's call is being recorded and the recording will be shared with everyone attending. So let's take a moment to quickly review today's agenda so you all know what to expect for this next half hour. We'll start with a chat about GiveSmart features and some data points, then we'll chat more about GiveSmart events and the features the platform offers. Kirsten will then take us into an in-depth demo of the GiveSmart events platform, including features like seating management, live activity feeds, and more. After the demo, we'll take a quick moment for a poll, and then we'll end the call with a Q&A. So as we, as we mentioned, keep the questions coming. We'll answer some live, same some for the end, and we want your input. If you have ideas to share, lessons learned, or any feedback, send us those messages in the chat so we can incorporate your ideas and feedback during the session. So with that, Kirsten, I will pass it over to you for more information about Gizmart. Yeah, thank you, Madison. So to get us kicked off here, I just want to give a very brief overview of what GiveSmart is and how we become the fundraising solution that we are today. Uh, so GiveSmart's vision has always been to bring together the best in class solutions to create that unified one stop fundraising tool that provides you with the ultimate fundraising solution. And building on those core strengths in our event and auction management, we added capabilities for stronger year round and digital fundraising solutions 
through the acquisition of mobile costs in 2021. And then to round out those capabilities, we acquired Simply Fundraising CRM last year to provide donor management and CRM tools as part of that suite of solutions. So all together, these form and combine to provide everything needed to manage an expansive year-round fundraising strategy. And each area of our fundraising suite has their different strengths and capabilities. And our team is comprised of fundraisers who have been part of the industry for <laughs> many years now, have walked in your shoes, and so we have that expertise and passion to help you achieve your fundraising success and move your mission forward. So today we're gonna to learn a little bit more about that bottom right circle, which is Gift Smart Events. So before we do that, let me just quickly introduce myself. Uh, Madison, you wanna to switch to the next slide there? Uh, my name is Kirsten Prozik, and as Madison did mention, I am the Product Operations Manager here at Gift Smart. I've been with the company now for about, uh, I don't know, nine years. <laughs> I've held many roles including working the events where these features that we're gonna to discuss today are very applicable. Uh, I've been on a, the PTO board for my children's school now for the past uh, seven years or so as the activity coordinator. So I've had lots and lots of practice of using these features in the field and in a similar manner to how your organization might. So as we just discussed, our suite of solutions do unite to provide that feature-packed fundraising powerhouse that allows you to both strengthen your existing donor relationships, but also provides those opportunities to grow that list of supporters. Because as we all know, it's important to provide multiple opportunities throughout the year where your supporters can, well, show their support. And the events platform can complement and enhance your strategies through the use of our multiple item types, robust ticketing and seating management features, and our messaging capabilities. Now, last year alone, we helped over eight thousand nonprofits run over 31,000 events, which range from those large in-person galas and golf outings to those really small online raffle sales and voting competitions. And the beauty of the events platform is that you can pick and choose as many or as few of these fundraising elements as you like for each of your events. And there's no limit to the number of events that you can run with your subscription. It's completely unlimited. So I'm not gonna give away all the fun on this first slide here because we're gonna take a look at some of these features within the events platform, but which we have to offer. But as a person who dives through the data on a day-to-day -day basis, I would be remiss if I didn't share just a couple of insights with you, especially as they will illustrate how we've seen the trends shifting as we move further away from that COVID era. So in 2022, it was a fantastic year for fundraising, which I really hope that your organizations were able to take advantage of because it was the first year since COVID that things seemed to feel, I don't know, back to normal. And for data, which like I said, I spend almost all my time digging through now, is fantastic because we now had this beautiful baseline to start measuring each year's growth to. And something that really stood out last year is we've seen a full swing back to the in-person and live events, which was really apparent with the growth in the use of some of our in-person features such as ticketing, which saw an uptick of 19%, and live auctions, which saw an increase of 63%. And if we zoom out um, and kind of take a holistic look at our organizations who were using GiveSmart last year, break those down by industry, we can see their recipes for how they found their success in 2022. With the vast majority of our industries finding that success through a combination of donations and ticketing, which accounted for about 60% of their overall revenue. And once you got past those two main revenue drivers, then the remaining pieces of that pie consisted primarily of their silent and live auctions. Now, even though the raffles and the voting and the instant items do make up a smaller percent of the overall revenue, they're still really great ways of keeping your supporters engaged throughout the year with really very little effort on your part because these types of events are conducted completely online and are really easy to set up. So enough with the uh, slides, let's go ahead and jump into our demo portion here. So I'm gonna share my screen. Yep, and yep. All right, Madison, you just wanna give me a, a yep that you can see my screen there. All right. Ah, if I could find the mute button. Yes, absolutely. It looks great. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want to start talking and then start demoing if you couldn't see what I was showing you. No, all good. Right. <laughs> it looks great. All right. So all of our event sites are going to have a homepage, which can be customized and branded to feel like an extension of your existing website. 
and it's going to make your supporters feel a little bit more at home if it's familiar. And the layout that you see here is definitely our default layout, but the section order uh, can be customized and additional sections can be added to fit your needs. So as we scroll down here, we're going to fall into our first section, which is our call to action, where you're gonna have hot links right into that ticket order form or over to our items page. But let's pop right into one of our order forms really fast. Here's where you can showcase all of your tickets that you create on your event, whether that's a combination of sponsorships, table sponsors, couples, uh, single admission tickets, really anything that you wanna highlight here. You can have as many or as few tickets that you wanna include. As you add things to your cart, it's gonna update over here on the side so you can see any additional fees, get that total amount, it'll update as you go through. As you move through the order form, you have the option to uh, add items for purchase. So maybe you wanna offer raffle tickets uh, when they're purchasing their you know, event tickets. Maybe you wanna sell some merchandise or swag. You could even have this whole order form just be a storefront. Maybe you just wanna sell all merchandise on this order form. It's completely up to you. And then you do have the option to create custom you know, questions and everything that go along. So if you're selling t-shirts, maybe you need to ask what size they want, et cetera. Uh, we do also offer the option here right on this order form to offer a one-time or monthly recurring donation. So the nice thing is that all of these can all be combined together all on one order form. So it's really simple and really easy for your supporters and your guests to be able to purchase this all in one single purchase. So when they do get down and they've added everything they want to their cart, they have the option to pay by a credit card, they can do Google Pay, and they can even do Apple Pay. So it's really nice and really convenient uh, you know, for your supporters when they're on here. Now, before we traverse off of the homepage, let's just go ahead and move down a little bit more. And you can see some of these preset options that you have. Uh, but of course, you can always create as many custom sections as you want as well. So you can include just a general donation section, again, where you can offer that one time or monthly recurring donation. You can have a thermometer where you can kind of watch your image fill up as those donations come in. We have the option for uh, your sponsors or your supporters to be able to donate items to your event, which is really nice and convenient for you. Uh, maybe if you're into the P2P and you wanna be able to offer peer-to-peer, -peer, we have that functionality as well. And then here's that nice section where it's just very convenient uh, where you can share contact information. So this can link out to your homepage or to a special website just for questions. Uh, maybe you wanna provide a phone number or email address. Here you can have a quick link right to uh, Google Maps so that people know where your venue is. And your supporters always have the option to share this event with their friends and their family uh, to kind of further promote uh, you know, uh, people coming to your event. Down here at the bottom, you do have the option to create as many different uh, call outs, maybe for your sponsors, maybe it's just bits of information that are pertinent to your event. But like I said, you can kind of customize and brand this as much as you want um, to really make it your own. So let's pop over to our items page now. And here, your viewers are going to be able to see as many items that you have available and that you've created on your site. So this can be any combination of your silent, your live, raffle, um, instant items, and even our vote items that we have. So they can always just scroll right through. They can see all the items here in one view. You have the option to go ahead and offer some sponsorship callouts here on this items page as well, which is nice. But they can also sort very quickly by clicking on the categories button. And over here on the left, you're gonna have all of our default categories. This is completely driven by the type of item that you've created. And over here on the right is going to be all of your custom categories that you've added. Clicking on any of these is going to automatically filter that view, uh, making it very easy to find the items that they're looking for. They can also, of course, search for a keyword or an item number if they're not exactly sure uh, what the item was or what the category might be that they were looking for. Something that's really nice on our site too is they can always keep track of their current activity and the things that they've currently been bidding on or what they've purchased. By clicking on that My Activity button that was just there, it'll automatically filter their view to just the things that they've interacted with. So these green little numeric numbers will appear on anything that they've purchased. Uh, maybe they made a donation. Those will all appear here. And the really nice part is that anything that they're currently bidding on in the silent auction, this little banner right here will update with their current bid if they're winning right now or if they're losing. If they wanna go ahead and place a new bid or make a new purchase, they simply have to click into any of the items. They can go ahead and select anything. Here, we're offering a multi-raffle discount here for this raffle item. All they have to do is click buy and it instantly goes right into their cart. Additionally, if you take a look at what it would look like as you're, maybe you're a volunteer or maybe you would be doing this on behalf of someone, it's a simple click of the button to go to the admin side. Here I can go ahead and type in 
uh, either their first name, their last name, their bidder number, any little bit of information just to help us narrow down that search. And as we start typing, we're going to see this drop down menu start to populate. Once I select who it is that I'm helping, their information will all populate right there. I can select what it is that they're purchasing, click buy, and it's instantly added to their cart. So very simple, very easy to flip back and forth there. Something you may have seen too are these two little buttons down here in the corners. Uh, these are only available and visible to your admin. So your general donors and your supporters are not going to be able to see these buttons. But these are super handy because if you ever have a question, if you're stuck on something, we have chat right here within the platform. You can chat 24 seven with any of our support agents. So if you're burning the midnight oil, you can hop in here, ask a question, get your response and keep on trucking right through the site. Maybe you're building your site. We have lots and lots of step throughs and walk through guides that can help you uh, with the process. So it's right in here. Maybe you need a little walk through. You see all of the training sessions and everything are right here, overlay right on top of the site that you're working in. And there's actually guided walkthroughs that'll walk you through helping everything get set up. So that's kind of the front end view. Now let's pop over to the back end view where all the magic really happens. So as you'll see over here on the left, we do have our LBAR navigation. If you have more than one GiveSmart product, you will notice that all of our sites have uh, LBAR navigation for the admin. It makes it very intuitive and very easy to use, whether you're flipping back and forth. So we try to make it exceptionally easy for you. Everything that you need to do for the setup is right up here at top. You would just start right from the top and work your way down. You have your design elements there, so very easy to start branding and customizing your site. And then here's where you get to all the fun stuff of adding in those fundraising elements that you can choose as many or as few to add at any given time. So maybe you're just having a standard auction. Maybe on this one, you're just offering some raffle items. It's very easy to just go in and customize that information. Before we get a little further there into our L bar, let's take a look here at the dashboard that we land on. This dashboard is a screenshot uh, of your current information and what you've built on the site. So very easy and convenient to see everything that you've done. When you click on these little more buttons, it is quick access into the reports and settings that control these different containers. So we tried to make as everything as easy as possible and being able to click uh, with the least amount of clicks possible to get into and drill into wherever you need to be. If we go into our live activity, this is really great for your MC or your auctioneer. As you can see, all of the current activity that's occurring on your site, this page updates every seven seconds automatically. So maybe if you're doing a last push for those raffle sales, if you're doing a last push for donations or whatever, your MC or your auctioneer can kind of watch this screen, watch those come through. And it's really great because they can use that to drive the engagement, right? They can make those calls and say, oh, Kirsten, I saw you just bought a raffle. Great job. Way to not you know, miss out on your opportunity. How many more can we get in the next five minutes? You know, Whatever it is. This is just that great engagement piece to be able to call out those different elements. And over here on the right, you have your message queue. So you can see those upcoming drafted and scheduled messages that you have sitting in your message in your queue. And if you need to make an edit, maybe you're ready to send a message, this little hot link right here will take you right into the messaging side of the house. You can go ahead and click on the message, make any updates, go ahead and send it. Maybe now it's time to schedule it. Maybe you wanna just resave it as a draft. It's all right here at the click of a button. So now let's move into something that's pertinent for our upcoming season, right? Lots of people are selling tickets for their upcoming season. One of the really nice features about GiveSmart is that you can also control the seating management. So as long as you sell your tickets through the GiveSmart platform, you can take advantage of this fantastic feature. So here on the seating management, you'll be able to see as many tables as you've created. Over here on the left, as soon as somebody purchases a ticket, you're gonna be able to see all of the unassigned guests living right over here on the side. It's very easy to just drag over a single ticket, or if you wanna grab, pull the entire group over, you can just drag and drop them into the table that they need to be in. If we look here, this party purchased 11 tickets. I have my table set up for a 10 right now. Whoops, that one, I never changed it back when I was testing it. Uh, but let's say I wanna change my capacity up to 11 to fit this table. So I can go ahead and just very easily update it to 11. I can now drag and drop them over to this table and they are now all seated together at this table for 11. Maybe I wanna rename my tables to something. Maybe it's the corporate uh, table or maybe this is the VIP table. Of course, I can go ahead and just change all those table names to whatever I need to showcase. If I ask any custom questions, I can also kind of sort and show what my meal choices were. 
so I can get a really nice glimpse of anybody that answered those questions. I can see what their meal choices were. I can print this and I can give this to my caterer or my vendor. Uh, and it's very easy to just see exactly what each table gets and what uh, meals they need at each table. So let's move into our last little piece here, which is going to be our reporting because I don't know, like if you, if you want anything like me and you love the data, this is gonna be the section for you. <laughs> so you can come in here as many times as you need. It's always going to be a live snapshot of your current data on your site. So whether that's pre-event, during event or post-event, uh, it's always great just to keep up on the information and the money flowing in to your, to your event. So over here on the overview, you're always going to get that quick snapshot of your revenue. You can drill in quickly to any of these pieces of the revenue. So if I click on that piece of the pie, it's going to pop up here in just a second. Uh, and I'm going to be able to drill in and see exactly what comprises that piece of the pie. I'll be able to see the item, the revenue associated with it, any purchasers uh, that have comprised that uh, auction item section right there. If I move down here on the left of my available revenue or reporting options, the next one that's going to stand out is my outstanding balances. It's always good to see uh, how much revenue is still outstanding out there that we need to collect. And conversely, the payments received. What payments have already been received? How are they received? Again, I can drill into this and I can see exactly who paid with cash or check or credit. Uh, one of the things that isn't listed here that is listed on the outstanding is we also have an option for pending. So maybe you have those um, guests who said, oh, I, I made a $10,000 donation, but can I send you a check next week? You can mark that in the site as well as a pledge and it'll show here in the pending and you'll have those pledge notes in there. So it's kind of a nice way, a paper trail of being able to say, why is this outstanding? Oh, because Bill said he's gonna send that check in next week. So you can tie that right to the account and you can see why that uh, balance is outstanding. The final reports here that we're gonna uh, take a look at are just some of these beautiful reports that kind of show you the insights that you can use to be able to determine for your future events, you know, what items performed well or what bidders did well. Because sometimes just because somebody didn't win an item doesn't mean that they didn't participate in your auction, right? They could have been bidding on multiple items. And it's interesting to see that data, which you'll be able to see in the top donor report. But in this top items report, this is a great way to summarize and take a look at the, how your items performed. So you'll know whether or not you'll want to include items similar to that in your next event. So here we break it down by four categories. We have the buy bidders up here in the top left. So this is how many unique bidders actually bid on this item. Over here, we have the total number of bids. So we can see that these three unique bidders bid a total of five times on this item. Maybe we just wanna see which uh, items drove in the most revenue. So we, don't, we only care about the top revenue drivers. We can definitely see that here. But my favorite is the by percent of the fair market value. So how many items performed at or above the fair market value that we have listed? So you can drill into any of those. The full reports are all down here, completely sortable by any of these columns. And it's just, like I said, a really great and fantastic way to drill in and start planning for your next event. All righty, are we all set? All set. Sorry, I should have said pass right. to you, Madison. No, that's not. <laughs> no, you're good. I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to cut you off. All righty. So now I'm going to ask you what you asked me a minute ago when my microphone froze. Does my screen look good? <laughs> <laughs> you are all good. All right. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to take just a quick pause here before the Q&A. We see all of your questions coming in. We've got some great questions that will be answered here shortly. Um, but with everything you've seen and heard today, I know that was a ton of information on just one of our GiveSmart modules. We would love to know if you would like more information about GiveSmart, um, whether that's details on plans and pricing, a personalized demo of the platform so that you can see all three of our modules, fundraise events and donor CRM. We are here to help your organization grow, so please let us know. Um, we also have a post-webinar survey where you can give us some feedback and also request information if you still have some questions that you want answered before the Q&A. Um, and as a reminder, and in case you missed it, we are recording today's call, and we will be sending out the recording in an email to everyone within the next 24 hours or so that will include this recording. So no worries there if there's anything you want to go back and review after the session ends. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. Again, you'll have another 
opportunity to request contact after the Q&A when the webinar ends. So without further ado, we have a lot of questions. So get ready, Kirsten, here we go. Um, so first question, let's see. In the custom sections, can you edit photo sizes? Uh, yes, in the custom. I believe that's, yeah, yes. I believe that's in reference to when you were talking about the landing pages. Yeah, absolutely. So on the home page, um, you can customize. They're all they're all empty HTML boxes. So you can add, uh, you know, simply by controlling the pixel size uh, and the resolution size of your images that you're uploading there. So 100% in those uh, custom sections, you can control the size of images because, um, like I said, it's all controlled by HTML. So whatever you're putting in there, you can definitely control uh, as many features and elements that you're adding to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then we also had a question about how you can specify which sponsor show sponsor logos show up in the item feed. So I believe that is in reference to the ads that mm -hmm. you can build. Yeah, absolutely. So every single um, sponsor image that you upload, um, they kind of upload it into what we call a card. Uh, and on there, you can specify which pages you want those cards to appear. So you have options for it to appear in the home page, uh, interspersed within the items page, um, even on our display screens, um, which we didn't uh, showcase today. Um, but yes, yeah, so you and, and on the donor page. So you'll have you have options uh, to choose where you want those specific donors to appear uh, on the specific pages of your site. Perfect. Um... Another question, when a ticket is purchased, can you send a customized email to the ticket purchaser? Or is there, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head if there's any sort of automatic feature that can be triggered. Yeah, so when you, uh, when a, a, someone purchases a ticket on the site, the email itself cannot be customized. However, there are fields within the um, email that can be customized. So we have what we call statement fields. Um, because uh, the, the general text that is sent, um, you know, is pertinent. It provides them with a, what we call a bit.ly link. It's a personalized link. So they have instant access being logged in. So there are certain elements within that uh, auto response email that we, but that we do not allow you to, to change. However, we do have sections within there that you can customize and include a statement, a statement note um, to be able to share additional details, et cetera. So, so the general email section part of it, no, can't be customized. However, there are elements that you can add to that uh, auto response. Perfect. Um, and then can you do like a combination of selling tables and individual tickets? So I guess that's another great opportunity to discuss the different item types and the different ticket types you can build. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, there's, there's no limit to the number of and types of tickets that you can create. So um, you, as you saw there, I had four different options. I had a, a general sponsor that came, um, uh, you know, with, with 10 seats. I had another one that was just a table sponsor that came with 10 seats. And then I had a couple's ticket that came with two seats and then a, a general admission that came with a single seat. So you can have any combination uh, assigned any number of seats um, to any of your sponsorships that you're building, including a zero ticket option. Uh, maybe you don't, maybe this is just, uh, maybe they're the bar sponsor or something, but they don't actually want to send any attendees to the event. That is also an option as well. Um, and you don't actually have to create those as, as tickets if you want. Like I said, if you're just asking for sponsors with no seats, that could just be its own. Uh, you can create a custom order form just for those types of individuals um, if, you, if you so choose. And uh, you could just have an entire form just for your no seat um, uh, you know, sponsors. So we have lots of options. There's, you know, that one ticket form that I showed you is just the homepage ticket form, uh, but you can create as many custom order forms as you wish as well. Perfect. Um, let's see another question. Um, with table management, this person said, our corporate sponsors are not purchasing tickets within GiveSmart. Is there a way to upload those tables without them purchasing tickets? So I guess adding the users secondhand after they've acquired their tickets or sponsorship and assigning them tables. Um, so we can't like uh, do an upload of a, a list um, for tickets. However, if your general admission tickets are going to be sold through the site and you're only talking about a subset, you know, a, a smaller groups of um, individuals like these corporate sponsors who are, are purchasing um, tables externally, uh, then yes, what they could do uh, is essentially an admin would then enter those tables on the back end with at like a $0 value because they've probably already purchased them externally. 
um, just so that you can still assign them tables using our seating management uh, feature. So yes, are there ways to do it? Um, yes, however, it's, it, it'll have a little bit of manual work um, on the back end to just, because then like I said, an admin will have to add those on their behalf within the platform. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, this is a fun one. So they said we are raffling off Taylor Swift concert tickets prior, prior to our event. That's very exciting. Does mm -hmm. GiftSmart have any limitations on having the tickets going live with a high volume of bidders logging on at one time? No, um, we have uh, we have radiothons and and uh, you know all sorts of different um, uh, things that that have thousands and thousands of people all logging in at the same time, making donations, uh, you know, interacting with the site. Um, at, at any given time, you know, we have we could have on busy event night weekends, you know, we could have hundreds of thousands of uh, of individuals participating on GiveSmart, you know, across the country. So we we have. Uh, safe measures in place to make sure that we don't ever meet those thresholds. And we do have things monitoring on the back end. Uh, if it looks like we're getting a lot of activity, we just bump that up. We just bump up our, um, our server power. So it's, there's always things being monitored and tracked on the back end. So uh, you don't have to ever worry about uh, overrunning the servers because we, we love to see the more activity, the better. <laughs> right. Um, let's see, we have just a couple more minutes, so we'll do just a couple more questions, but we appreciate everyone's questions coming in. And if we don't answer your question, um, I will have my colleague, Kathy, put my email address into the chat, um, so that we can follow up with you. Um, just send me a quick email or message after the webinar ends, or even in the post webinar survey, let us know that you would like a response to your question and we can get back to you because there's a lot coming in. Um, Someone said, can GiveSmart assign table seating when the ticket is purchased? Yes, as soon as, soon as a ticket is purchased, um, it'll populate there in the unassigned um, yeah, column on the left that we are seeing in the seating management. And then uh, you'll be able to control where they where they get seated and you can drag and drop them right over to a seat. So yeah, mm -hmm. so as soon as, as soon as that ticket's been purchased, um, even if let's say a table, uh, somebody who bought a table um, didn't know who they're bringing yet, then you'll see you'll see nine unassigned tickets all attributed to that one purchaser, but they're all under the same order. So you know they go together. Um, so they don't even have to have a name associated with it yet uh, to still populate and for you to be able to see them. Perfect. Um, and last question before we log off, since we have about a minute left, are you able to speak at all on the peer-to-peer um, or fundraise like champion pages that are offered through GiveSmart. So I guess that's a good opportunity to also talk about our other module, GiveSmart Fundraise. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the champion or peer-to-peer -peer functionality within uh, events um, is a little limited in the fact that, uh, you know, it's, it's more admin managed, right? So it's kind of, you're kind of creating those champions uh, and managing those champions. Whereas on our fundraise platform, it was actually built around the peer-to-peer -peer functionality. So like events is the core is your auction and uh, event functionality, whereas fundraise, it's more of that online uh, and peer-to-peer -peer experience. So yes, uh, can you do peer-to-peer -peer in events? A hundred percent, but your the ability to do certain things is exceptionally limited. Um, whereas the fundraise platform, like I said, that's their meat and potatoes. So that's where it was built around. Uh, and so it's, it acts more as that true being able to self sign up as a um, as a fundraiser, uh, being able to create teams, being able to attribute those funds and see all that on the back end. You're going to get a lot more features and functionality on the fundraise platform for that than you will on the events. Perfect. All right. Well, there's still so many great questions. So like I said, please let us know if you would like us to get back to you. Um, we would be more than happy to follow up with you and answer your questions. So I am dropping my email address right here in the chat for everyone. Please feel free to reach out to me anytime um, and we can get back to you as soon as possible. But with that, it's time to say farewell for today. Uh, like I said, please use that end of webinar survey as well to share any feedback with us and request contact if you wanna learn more. Thank you to everyone who joined us. Thank you for your engagement. Thank you, Kirsten, for your time and extending your expertise to all of us. And we will see everyone next time. Thanks, all.